the robots will take all our jobs. In the dev world, it's already starting with the help of tools such as GitHub Copilot, but we probably still have a few good years until the AI will completely take over. As developers, the only chance we have to stay relevant in the long term is to optimize our processes and enhance the delivered output. A lot of tools and libraries aimed at improving dev speed and quality were released in recent years, and in this video we'll talk about one of the major ones. Superbase. If you are new to this channel, welcome. I am a Java developer who is also heavily involved in the front-end space for more than 10 years now. While a backend developer at heart, backend as a service platforms such as Superbase really got me excited because they allow us to save huge amounts of time and avoid a lot of hard work on both development and deployments. We'll get into all the great features Superbase has to offer in just a second, but first let's briefly look at the current backend space for a bit of context. When I first started working as a developer back in 2010, Java was pretty much the de facto backend solution, especially in enterprise software. It offered a huge ecosystem of libraries and tools, and most large companies who needed stable, secure and scalable backend solutions chose Java as a language. The Java technology has this bad reputation of containing large amounts of boilerplate code, of relying on a huge number of cumbersome standards, and, in general, for requiring too much work for the simplest of tasks. While this is true to some extent, the Java runtime environment is powerful enough to support additional languages such as Scala or Kotlin, which are built on top of Java and which remove some of the issues and programming practices considered too old for this day and age. On top of that, libraries such as Spring manage to do wonders in the web development space by hiding a lot of the complexity and work behind the scenes and giving developers access to simple, easy-to-use solutions even for the most difficult of problems. So, with a Kotlin plus Spring Mix, for instance, you can seamlessly develop stable, secure and scalable backend services at an enterprise level of quality. However, most of the time, especially in smaller projects, this could turn out to be overkill. While the tech stack is improved, you still need to worry about deployments, dockers, AWS instances and more. This is where this new wave of tools such as Dino come into play. I have a couple of detailed videos about Dino if you are interested in it, but for the sake of this video it's enough to know that while it didn't reach yet the level of maturity as the Java ecosystem, features such as the focus on security, its type safety and the third party library system make Dino a decent candidate for most backend projects. What helps it stand out of the crowd though is Dino Deploy, which basically removes the entire deployment and scaling process out of your hands. So, with the click of a button, your code is built and deployed on the edge for you. A pattern emerges here. We are going from complex code to simple code and from difficult deployment processes to no deployment process at all. The next step should be obvious and this is what backend as a service solutions offer. A no code, no deployment tool offering all the backend features you would expect ranging from database access to file storage and authentication. So let's take a closer look at Superbase, see what it has to offer and how you can easily integrate it with your front-end app. We'll jump right into it by going to their web app at superbase.com. I'll start by mentioning that this is a free product for basic usage, but you will probably need a pro account if you are working on anything serious. Superbase is presented as a Firebase alternative built on top of open source software. Also, know that you can choose to self-host your Superbase instance using Docker. With some of the details out of the way, go ahead and create a free account. Once that's done, we'll create a new project. The wizard is intuitive. You need to add a project name, a strong password for your database, the hosting region and the pricing plan. Superbase is using Postgres under the hood for all database operations and features. Postgres is an extremely powerful open source tool and we'll discuss it in detail in a couple of minutes. Back to the dashboard, note the project API keys and the project URL. Remember them because we'll use this information when defining our Superbase JavaScript client. On the left hand side you'll see options such as authentication, storage, an SQL editor or edge functions. As I already mentioned, these are the main features Superbase offers and they are the building blocks you'll need to create all the backend functionality needed for most of your projects. Let's start by looking at authentication. As a quick side note, the documentation is extremely clear and intuitive so you'll be able to get up to speed with these tools in no time. Superbase authentication implementation is powerful and offers you a lot of flexibility ranging from built-in social authentication to magic link logins or custom welcome email templates. In a SolidJS based front-end app I'm going to npm install the Superbase JavaScript package and then we'll initialize the client using the project URL and the public key I mentioned a bit earlier. There are other options you can pass to the create client method to customize your Superbase instance but for most cases the defaults will cover your needs. Then in a register page where the user will input their email and password, we'll be able to easily trigger a register call via the Superbase client. One of the things I really like about this is the intuitive API. Under the hood, the client will perform REST API calls to the project URL using JWT tokens to identify the requests. 
The sign up method will return either an error if the request failed for any kind of reason and some data regarding the authenticated user and the session. Remember that whenever you are using username and password registration, a confirmation email will be sent to the client. In the dashboard, you'll be able to manage all your authenticated users and provide support such as resetting passwords or sending authentication links. Before moving forward, I want to mention a pretty common authentication scenario. Whenever your customers will log in via link sent through the email, they'll end up on your app as unauthenticated. You can use the on-auth state change method somewhere in the root component of your single page app and then react accordingly whenever the state changes. Next, let's briefly discuss the storage capabilities offered by Supabase. In a usual backend implementation, you'd have to either attach some sort of local storage component to your instance or to use a third-party service such as the AWS 3. All this work is abstracted away in this case. I simply created a bucket to store my digital content and then, using the same Supabase client we already defined in our project, we'll make some requests to the storage endpoint. There is way more to know about storing data and there are permissions, policies and file management options to look into, but everything is done in a very straightforward manner. Next, let's discuss database support. In most cases, your backend service will be just a thin REST API layer on top of your database. Supabase leverages this idea and using the same JavaScript client you should be familiar with by now, allows us to interact with the Postgres database instance. We'll start by creating a simple database table using the dashboard editor. As always, your SQL tables should always have a primary key. We'll stick with the auto increment number ID for this example because we'll also enhance the table security via row level security policies. However, most of the time, I like to take an extra step of precaution and use UIDs as primary keys. With the table in place, let's talk database security. Usually, in your standard backend implementation, you'd have written logic to ensure that users can read or write in the database based on some authorization rules. This is part of the business logic and it falls in your lap as a developer to make sure that the user Joe can't modify the details of the user Jane, for instance. Postgres allows us to solve this in a more elegant manner using row-level security rules. These are always evaluated before a table action is performed and the query will be narrowed down or fully rejected based on the security rules. Supabase enables this feature and also provides useful templates to generate appropriate rules in our app. Next, let's take a quick look at how our front-end implementation will look like. Using the Supabase client, we can easily perform create, read, update or delete operations directly on the table. You'll see that in the implementation, we don't make any any reference to the row level security policy. Whenever a query is sent to the backend, the request will also contain the JWT authentication token. Supabase will note one back the token, extract the necessary data and compare it to the query to perform all the security checks needed. At the beginning of this video, I was mentioning that Postgres is extremely powerful and offers a wide range of features, which is impressive since it is a free to use service. One powerful such feature, which is leveraged by Supabase to offer real time support, is Postgres CDC or Change Data Capture, which in short, allows anybody with the right security settings to listen and react in real time to any table changes. Back to our code, I define the user TypeScript interface to ensure the correct data structure and then I'm simply using the Supabase API methods to perform various SQL operations. FYI, the API allows you to do more complex operations, perform joins and other useful actions. The Supabase team also focused on giving you tools to monitor, log and query your database, so all in all, you have access to all the right tools packed in an easy to use dashboard, so most of the backend and DevOps work is nicely abstracted away. I also want to mention Supabase's Edge function beta support here. Code running on the Edge and Lambda functions are a fairly complex topic and I'll tackle it in a separate video, so consider subscribing if you want to stay up to date with such topics. If you found this video useful, please consider liking it. Thank you for watching.